uh, we live in, a, in kind of a crazy world. There are lots of disruptive innovations, not just Uber and Airbnb, but um, blockchain and cryptocurrencies and those sorts of things that may change the way business is transacted in the future. Um, cybersecurity risks and active regulators, both here and abroad, uh, impact the risks that companies face. So Mark, I'm gonna throw the first question to you. As you've looked at your research, how has the, the current environment and that future look at risks impacted how management assesses risk for the company? Okay. Maybe to provide a little context, I'll describe a little of the work we're doing at NC State. Uh, about 14 years ago, we launched, a, we call it a center, even though it's not officially a center, but it's a research area focused thought center on the topic of enterprise risk management. And over that last 14 years, we've worked very closely with companies. So on the management side and how they're thinking about managing that complex web of risk. So our interactions have been, uh, when I'm thinking about risk assessment now, I'm thinking about that management side to it. And we, we have a group of companies that partner with us, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Lockheed Martin, very big companies. And it's interesting for me as I've interacted with them over that 10 or 14 year period, the challenges they're facing and how they think about managing risk at the enterprise level. I mean, they're clearly managing risk because they're up and running. So it's not that they're not managing risk, but they're realizing the reality of risk today that are affecting their business models is just getting incredibly complex. So over the last eight years, we've partnered with the AICPA where we've done surveys of a variety of things, but one of the questions we're always asking, and this is going to management side, is, and this is a perception question, so you can shoot holes in it, but it still gives you a read of what they're thinking. We ask them questions along the lines of, to what extent do you think the volume and complexity of risk has changed for your organization over, let's say, the last five years? Every year, they are way to the right on you know, picking the extreme. You know, it is extremely different in their minds, the volume, and then the complexity of those individual risks. Uh, other questions that we ask get into the questions of, to what extent have you, has your organization then experienced a significant operational surprise? Way to the right. Suggesting that it's getting harder and harder and there are events that occur. The other thing that we hear from them is they're self-assessing their level of maturity and how they think about risk is fairly immature. So there's, they're perceiving a gap, I guess. They're just saying, you know, these risks that we're facing, you mentioned several, cyber, obviously, mm -hmm. geopolitical, uh, just all the things that are affecting disruptive innovation, all of those individually, they're saying, are so hard to get our head around that cyber is very complex. But then when you start looking at the reality is these risks, as we like to say as we work with companies, risks don't know the company's org chart. Rather, they interact, they get messy, and they get muddled together, and they're realizing how hard it is to manage that. So, you know, when I look at the, the volume and the, the issues in the environment that they're facing, they're telling us it's getting really hard, but they're trying to invest a lot, lot more in it in better getting their arms around it. So I think all that, I think, is affecting how they're thinking about risk. You know, management has to go through a process of, of aggregating these risks, all of the risks, not just the financial reporting risks, right. but, but all of the risks. And what are, what are some of the challenges that they're facing? Um, but how, does that, how can that help the auditor as management works through that? Okay. You know, as we started out, the, the complexity of risk today is, as we talked about the volume and the difficulty of getting your arms around it, is just huge. And so they're challenged with just, it's a very difficult assessment. Particularly if we look at a large global entity where they're in, there's so many risks. And so you'll hear them sometimes say, well, we went through a risk identification process and we've got thousands of risks documented. And you're like, oh my, you know, how can you even yeah. start managing any? So part of it is the volume of managing the ones they're managing. I would say though, before you even get there, there are entities. So you get maybe deeper into more middle market entities that I would say are still not really embracing the need to think about risk. Mm -hmm. There's that optimism thing coming back in. So a lot of, you know, you talk to some CEOs and they'll say, mm, we don't need to do that thing. We already know what our big risks are which they know what a lot of them are, but 
part of the challenge, I think, going back to your question is, so often we can quickly find and wallpaper this room in about 10 minutes, if I'm thinking about a large global company, but often I'm documenting what I already know. And when I'm management, or more importantly, when I'm on the board, <laughs> I'm worried about what is that I don't know that I should have known. And I think that's the challenge of getting people to think beyond what's sort of obvious, because there's so much that's obvious, I feel sort of good when I think about that. And so I think part of the challenge is figuring out a way to organize this complex sort of process of trying to identify the risk, but then prioritize the ones I really need focus on. Now, uh, they're, they're working hard to do it. Uh, there's a lot of pressure, particularly on the board. So the pressure for managing risk has really been sort of tagged at the board level from the New York Stock Exchange requirements, the SEC's disclosure issues, S&P is evaluating management and governance, so they're looking at boards. So boards feel the pressure, which then in turn puts it on the management side. Uh, and so they're, they're, they're working to improve what they're doing, uh, but they're still, I would say, at a fairly early stage of maturity of really having a robust system the leadership is interesting, though, because the New York Stock Exchange was sort of one of the first movers in sort of tagging the audit committee with responsibilities for, quote, discussing risk assessment and risk management. That means that a lot of times the person on the management level has been tagged to lead the process is the CFO or the director of internal audit. Now, one could argue that may not be the right positions, but that's commonly where it's residing. Right. But many now are creating management level risk committees that are meeting, that sort of provides that more enterprise view. And it's when those exist, to me, is a huge opportunity for the audit side to say, what is it that's being discussed at the management level risk committees? Because that's um, different groups of executives coming together, including the CFO, but beyond, let me find out what you are talking about. Because to me, if I'm going in and sort of assessing the risk assessment component of internal control, I think I'd like to understand how are they doing this, that risk management committee, for example, what are they talking about, to give me some sense of the control environment, tone at the top, and how they think about risk, but then more explicitly gives me insight about the risk assessment process mm -hmm. of internal control. Now, let me ask you just a follow-up question there. This goes to something Maria said early on, that um, disruption is impacting everybody and mm -hmm. presumably could impact our profession as well. As you work with uh, companies and see what they're doing in risk assessment, how are they working that, you know, how they might be disrupted into that risk assessment process? Well, it's interesting because a lot of times when companies first launch a process, we'll, we'll call it ERM, some don't like to use that term, but that concept of an enterprise view of their risk, unfortunately for many, when they get started, they see it more as a compliance thing. So mm -hmm. they're more in operations, legal, and to financial reporting. But they're realizing the value for them would be connecting it to the strategy. Mm -hmm. And so when they start seeing, wait a minute, I got to take risk to make money. All right, let's talk about how we make money and let's go back and think about the risk. And doing so then helps open my eyes more to those external factors that could be, well, I sell this product. It makes a lot of money for me right now. What am I assuming? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming customer, customer preferences are not going to change or a competitor's not gonna dump some new technology. Right. I think it's when they start doing it from that lens, they begin to pick up some of those potential disruptors. And that's a great question, what am I assuming? You know, an auditor could ask themselves that mm -hmm. you know, right. at any given point in any given day, probably. Right.